Samsung recently announced the PCI Gen 5 9100 Pro Series SSDs. In their Pro lineup, this now adds an extra number to the naming scheme. And according to the spec sheet, this should also be one of the fastest Gen 5 M.2 SSDs currently available on the market, breaking the speed limits of SSD drives and future-proofing our professional systems for more intensive computing tasks, like running local AI operations, for example. So this is my first look and hands-on review with the 9100 Pro drive, and we will also also test exactly how fast it is, so stay tuned. Just like the previous generation, the 9100 Pro comes in two variations, with and without a heatsink, although previously the heatsink version was targeted more towards PlayStation 5 consoles. But now, things are a little bit different, since this SSD offers much higher speeds than PlayStation 5 is able to support, so it may be a better fit for future console generations. This unit that Samsung sent me is a 1TB version equipped with a heatsink, and I have to say that it looks all pro and business with those shiny metal edges. Be sure to choose the right version based on your device when buying, as the built-in heatsink model is really meant for devices that do not have any passive or active drive cooling solution, as for most supported motherboards they will likely have a heatsink or a thermal solution of their own, making this model incompatible for installation. Of course you can always remove the heatsink, but that will void the warranty in this case. While PCI Gen 5 SSDs do in theory run much hotter because of the insane performance, Samsung has got you covered with its advanced 5 nanometer controller, bringing better power efficiency and cooler operation. The 9100 Pro uses TLC memory with Samsung's VNAND technology, and it is available in multiple capacities, ranging from 1TB all the way up to 8TB, which is really nice to see, since utilizing those blazing fast transfer speeds to get huge libraries of files on and off the SSD will surely come in handy. All of these drives support 256-bit disk encryption, and they all come with a 5-year warranty, or starting from 600TB written, whichever comes first, and naturally this amount will be higher on the higher capacity models. And across the different capacities, you will also see some minor differences in specs, like drive cache, which is proportional to the nominal capacity of the drive in gigabytes, like one terabyte will get you one gigabyte of drive cache, and so on. But we are yet to see a terabyte version, since it is only going to be released later this year. Now let's talk about the speeds, as it seems like just recently we saw the PCI Gen 4 being widely adopted, while well, now we already have PCI Gen 5 discs hitting the market before there are enough consumer devices supporting it. So what's the difference? Well, the longest living PCI Gen 3 interface was capable of read-write speeds up to 3500 megabytes per second, then PCI Gen 4 was capable of double those speeds maxing out at 7000 megabytes per second. Now the current Gen 5 is capable of, well, you can already guess, double the speeds of Gen 4, making it insanely fast at around 14,000 megabytes per second, which is more than average user might ever need. And for the science, this is 4 times faster than Gen 3 PCI, and around 25 times faster than a regular SATA SSD drive, so we can clearly see how storage speeds have advanced over time. So to test and verify those crazy speeds, I also ran some benchmarks, so Here's a snippet of crystal disk mark speeds I was able to achieve, and these seem to be really close to the advertised maximum speeds, so I am pretty impressed. Also when reading the datasheet, we can see that Samsung achieved those maximum speeds with TurboWrite technology enabled, and for this you have to have Samsung Magician installed, as this is the all-in-one toolkit for all your Samsung SSD drives, as it includes benchmarks, firmware updates, drive health status, and other drive-specific features. And for those interested, this is the system I ran the tests on. And maybe you see that your system is similarly specced, so you want to order one. But hold on a minute, as compatibility might be a challenge depending on your system. A lot of CPUs already support PCI Gen 5 for a while, but many computer systems and consumer-grade motherboards will still use Gen 4 M.2 SSD slots instead, with Gen 5 usually being available on higher tier gaming motherboards. And well, this was the case for me as well, as I bought a Z790 motherboard, which only has one PCI slot, meant for graphics card, with it being directly linked to the CPU. So in order to test this drive at its full potential, I had to buy a special PCI 5 SSD adapter from Sabrent, remove the built-in heatsink on the adapter, and swap it out with my graphics card in this slot. So that's not really an optimal setup anymore, which also prevented me from doing more daily real-life tests, like full-blown video editing. But if you're using AMD Ryzen 7000 series, then things should be a little bit easier, as there is a broader choice of more affordable motherboards out there, featuring PCI Gen 5 SSD slots, 
like the more affordable B series for example. And as for Intel, we are starting to see more boards with Gen 5 slots, but chances are that you might only see one within the higher priced Z series motherboards. So all in all, we can clearly see that this really is a pro product targeted at professionals who would be able to utilize these transfer speeds in their daily work, or just max out and showcase the capabilities of a modern computer system, while also having it future proofed for a great while ahead, bearing the extra costs of course. As naturally, the computer configurations that would support this drive are expected to be more expensive, and so are the drives themselves, as with double the speeds, the 9100 Pro series also do have at around 50 to 70% higher price tag when compared to the same capacity Gen 4 SSDs. So if you want to max out your system and experience the fastest storage speeds available, then compatibility and price might be the only things to consider. That said, we can surely expect more Gen 5 capable devices to enter the market soon, with more supported laptops, mini PCs, and perhaps even consoles, eventually becoming mainstream, thus lowering the price. So I hope that you enjoyed this technical video and also gained some insights on the next gen storage. Be sure to subscribe, turn on notifications, and check out my channel for other tech content. So see you in the next video.